Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we will talk about magnets, continue talking about magnets. Um, now this lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens, uh, presented on Unizor.com. If you found this lecture on YouTube or somewhere else, um, I do recommend you to go to Unizor.com because the lecture is actually part of the course. So you will see the whole hierarchy of uh, different uh, topics and uh, every lecture has very detailed notes like a textbook um, the site has exams and the site is completely free no ads no strings attached so let's talk about magnets a little bit more now this is unusual lecture well, for this course because primarily um, in this course I'm trying to stick to theoretical part of the physics, which means formulas, uh, certain laws, etc. Now, today's lecture will be about practical usage of magnets. Now, why I have decided to, to do this, um, I didn't discuss very much practicality of electricity. <clears throat> However, it's kind of obvious what we're using electricity for. Uh, with magnets, it's not as obvious and in many cases the usage of the magnets is hidden and that's why I would like actually to put it on the surface. So first of all there is a very long list of different um, applications of magnets in the notes for this lecture. I will just mention a few of them. Well everybody is using a screwdriver and you know that there are magnetic screwdrivers which means if you just touch a nail or, uh, or or a screw or whatever, it sticks to it. That's the magnet. That's a permanent magnet inside the screwdriver. Now, um, now everybody heard about MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Well, that's a medical device, very complicated device, and it's using magnets to basically make an image of, let's say, your brain or something else um, for diagnostic purposes. Um, now, in computers, it's used extensively in many, many different places. Um, now, those uh, of you who um, know, who have kids actually, there are magnetic toys. So, my grandchildren, for instance, build whole buildings from certain magnetic blocks. They're sticking together. Uh, what else? Well, obviously, in all the motors, electric motors uh, and electric generators, magne magnets are used very extensively. I mean, they are in the heart of, this, of these devices. Well, everybody knows about compass, obviously. So, these are just a few applications where um, magnets are used. There are many, many, many more. Now, um, uh, Magnets do occur naturally, like we can find it as a rock, basically. Now, and that's how they were basically first found and uh, kind of uh, were subject of curiosity, I would say, because these two rocks, they can either attract each other or repel each other, depending on which side you turn it. Now, what are these? These are called magnetites. Magnetites. And uh, it's a iron oxide actually, and the chemical composition is ferrum 3O4. So every molecule has three atoms of uh, iron ferrum and uh, four items, uh, atoms of uh, oxygen. So that's the naturally occurring. Um, permanent magnets. They are weak. Um, now, we also have the ability to do um, artificial ones. Now, before we have this kind of technology to do the artificial magnets, um, people were using whatever was available. And how um, these permanent magnets which occur in nature how they were used well for example if you just hang it this rock on the thread 
it will turn along a meridian like a compass because it's a permanent magnet what is a compass this uh, arrow inside the compass is a permanent magnet it has north and south and one uh, of, of the poles is pointing to north and other to south same thing with this any permanent magnet just left by itself will turn along the meridian line because the earth is a giant magnet now um, another way how you can use the same quality is if you can in some kind of a reservoir with water you put a plate which is floating and put this piece of rock on this plate so it's just can turn in any way um, just floating on the liquid it will do exactly the same as in this case it will turn towards uh, north-south direction so these are the usages and obviously as I was saying um, this is a very weak permanent magnet then we have learned how to make artificial ones well basically again it's kind of a composition of certain elements uh, it's an alloy uh, obviously the main component is iron of this alloy and one of the strongest um, artificial magnets permanent magnets is is called uh, it's a very difficult word neodymium well there is an element neodymium and if you add this element to iron and maybe something else I don't remember I think cremium or something I don't know um, so you will get this shiny um, piece of metal basically it's alloy um, which has a very very strong permanent magnetic qualities and there are many applications for this and these are really strong even the little tiny like ring um, made of this material is very very strong magnet uh, and by the way it, you can purchase them on the internet now we can do different things um, uh, use, we can do different form and shape uh, of artificial magnets I mean everybody knows the um, the u-shape magnet right one part is north and another part is south obviously the bar shape one part is north and another is south you can have spheres you can have rings you can have many different kinds depending on application for example if you have rings for instance and um, then you have some kind of a I don't know, stick and you put rings on the top of another if you put them in a direction so if this is a ring and you have one surface north and bottom surface is south and you will put them one on the top of another if you put them in this sequence they will stick to each other but if you will put it in this sequence this is one ring, this is another ring, this is third ring they will repel each other because north to north and south to south will repair and they will be hanging one on top above the, uh, above the other right? so these are different little experiments basically which prove certain magnetic qualities now um, what else? What, what's interesting is let's talk about bar magnets now you you can feel the strength of the magnet by having let's say a metal paper clip or a nail and just stick it to this particular place which is a, a pole one of the poles North Pole for instance then if you will stick into this position and you will feel how it pulls your nail um, you will feel that the magnetic strength is a little bit weaker and at this point in the middle it will be just zero basically there will be no strength at all and then as you move uh, further to the another pole 
again strength will be greater. So this is kind of a representation of the strength of the force. Now, um, why is that? Well, obviously, this part is magnetic in one direction, and this part is magnetic in another direction. So if you have a, this nail in the middle, then it's like pulling uh, into two different sides with the same strengths, and they basically nullify each other. And that's why you have no magnetic properties in the middle of this bar magnet. Now, what, happen, what happens if you uh, just cut this magnet in the middle? Will you have only... You see, this is the north part, for instance, this is the south part. If you will break it in the middle, will you have only north in this particular case and only south in this particular case? No, absolutely not. So if this is north and this is south, this is north, this is south, this is north, this is south. So every piece of this will have two poles. And it's related to basically the, uh, the reason why magnetic field exists, and that we will discuss it in the next lecture. But that's what's happening. So there is no such thing as a single pole permanent magnet. Um, it's always two. If, if you divide it in half, you will still have two pieces. Obviously, these will be weaker. Each of, the, each of these will be weaker than this one. Okay, what else? Um, now, permanent versus temporary magnets. So there are temporary magnets. Now, your nail, if you stick it to the magnet, to the permanent magnet, This is your nail. It becomes actually a magnet by itself because now you can have a paper clip and attach it to this part and it will attach it. It will it will magnet. It, it will basically attract it. <coughs> so this becomes a continuation of this. So if this is a some kind of a magnet, permanent magnet. Now this nail becomes a temporary magnet. So if this is a north pole, then this will be a south pole, and this will be north pole on the nail. And that's why you can have this paper clip attracted to this, because paper clip itself becomes again a little magnet with this south and this north. And north to south and north to south are attracting to each other. So that's what's happening. But this is temporary. As soon as you disconnect it, the orientation of atoms inside the paper clip or, or a nail will become chaotic again, and it will lose its magnetic properties. So the difference between permanent and temporary magnets is that the permanent magnet has, permanent magnet has the same orientation of atoms inside, and we will talk about this in a little bit more details when talk about talking about magnetic fields. Uh, now, the soft uh, metals like iron, they do have some kind of a chaotic, um, uh, uh, chaotic position of, of, of its atoms inside. They're not oriented the same way as in a permanent magnet. And that's why as soon as you um, disconnect them, there is no force which brings them in order, so they become again chaotic and lose their magnetic properties. So by themselves, they will not magnet uh, use. They will not possess any magnetic properties. Although I should actually have to say that um, in this case, it's not exactly like they immediately lose their m magnetic properties. I think during a certain very short period of time while all these atoms inside um, the nail are again become, becoming uh, chaotically positioned, it takes some time. And while this time lasts, 
certain magnetic properties will retain, although less and less. So it's a, it, in a short period of time, it will completely disappear when all the atoms become again chaotically positioned. So these are temporary magnets. And obviously there are things which are completely um, non, not, not capable of being magnetized, like copper, for instance, doesn't really have this kind of a property. So whatever chaotic position of the atoms inside the copper exists, um, magnetic properties of the permanent magnet doesn't change, doesn't reorient um, the atoms inside the copper. Next, um, next is a very, <laughs> it's a very interesting, at least for me. I mean, I'm old enough uh, uh, witnessing the first computers. Now, the first, first, first computers, they needed some kind of a memory, and the memory was organized. Each bit of memory, zero or one, was actually written on a small ring. It's called ferrit or ferrite ring. And if you have, if you have to have, for instance, one byte of information, which is eight bits, so you had eight rings on the on the wire, and there are actually different wires. One wire uh, sends an impulse, and these rings, this um, ferrite material, it's such an interesting thing. If you put an impulse through this ring, it will magnetize in one direction, like north in one side and south in another side. If you will um, send an impulse in another direction, it will magnetize differently. Uh, and that's what actually zero and one meant. Um, so, obviously you understand how much uh, weight and, uh, and space this memory occupied. I mean, it's huge. So I do remember actually seeing this um, ferret rings um, as, as a memory. Nowadays it's completely different, however, magnetic disks, which we are still using, um, they are using a layer of certain um, substance which, is, which, which has certain magnetic properties. And you can again write on it or read from it, and that means you are orienting atoms on this surface, on this magnetic surface of the disk, in, why, in one or another way. So that's basically the same principle as with this, it, except that our um, memory bits are not in uh, ferret rings, but on a molecular level, basically, or almost molecular level, very, very small. So that's about uh, computer memory. What else? And magnetic tape. Everybody knows what magnetic tape is. Um, remember, the, the sound was recorded on magnetic tape uh, before something a little bit more advanced appeared on the market. Um, and, uh, and the last one, which I... Yeah, even the liquid. Yes, even the liquid can be made in such a way that it has certain magnetic properties and there is certain uh, medical technique uh, to inject um, magnetic magnetic prop uh, liquid with magnetic properties inside the tumor and then using external devices you can heat up this uh, liquid because it has these magnetic properties and the heat actually kills the tumor um, and at the end, I, I wanted to spend some time actually for something which is, uh, I think, very interesting. So everybody knows about gravity. Um, gravity exists. I mean, it looks like it's some kind of a um, very uh, unusual kind of energy because it does not really disappear. You cannot spend it so in, in, in some way or another. It's, it's always there. So it looks like um, it's a kind of a way you can use to create some kind of a machine which will 
be just moving all the time based on this uh, properties of gravitation. Now, magnets are exactly the same, I except it's much easier to manipulate because it's much stronger than the gravity. So people were using magnets to build some kind of a um, perpetuum mobile, machines which are moving constantly can, for instance, can generate electricity if that's, if that's true. And, um, well, let me just give you one small example. Now, there is uh, an example which, which I put in the notes for this lecture, but this is another one which I kind of like, and uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know exactly all the details why it's not working. It's not working because it contradicts the um, the conservation of energy principle, but however it's interesting, consider um, uh, consider a uh, this type of a, a wheel, let's say, and on the wheel you have a chain of metal uh, walls, let's say, connected to each other. Okay. Now, by itself, obviously it does not rotate. Now, this, there is an axis here. Um, however, what if you will put a magnet here? Well, it looks like this magnet is attracting these balls much more than these balls. So why aren't they moving? Why isn't that rotates the whole thing? Well, I mean, first of all, you can very easily make this experiment yourself, and it will not move. Um, now, the reason is that there are many different forces here. There are forces which are attracting here, but there are forces which attract from this. Now, how can you turn your magnet in such a way that it will attract these more than this? It looks like it's possible. Actually, it's not. So, no matter how you do it, you will always be... Uh, in the position that nothing actually moves. Now there are there are much more ingenious devices, and uh, the one which I put um, in uh, in the notes was it, it looked like the um, car engine. Um, so if you have let's say one cylinder, okay, which is supposed to be up and down. So if you have a magnet which is here and here. Now this would be always north and south. Now what if you will put south here? It will go up, right? Because north and south will... but while it's going up we will turn it around. Let's say we will connect movement of the um, of this part with rotation of this part through some kind of a crank uh, mechanism or whatever. So as soon as this one reaches the top, this one will turn around and instead of uh, north-south it will be uh, it will be south-north. Then it will start uh, repelling it and it will push it down. So if you will synchronize it in, in such a way then it, it looks like it should move by itself. Well it will move by itself for a while if you will start this movement somehow but then the friction and some other things will stop it so again all these attempts are very interesting from from kind of a hobby standpoint and uh, if you will go on the internet and YouTube for instance you will find numerous examples of machines which seemingly work by themselves without any additional source of um, energy. Well, generally speaking, none of that would work. However, it's again very interesting hobby, and I do recommend you to make this search. It's it's just very kind of it's a, it's a very good thing to, to to satisfy your curiosity. All right, so basically that's it about magnets. Uh, I think next lecture will be much more theoretical which I would personally prefer. But this is, again, some kind of an interesting facts about magnets, and I thought to share it with you. Thanks very much, and good luck.